All right, in this tutorial, we're just going to take a quick look at this uh, semi truck that I've started to work on yesterday. It needs a boatload of work to complete it. But here it is in the scene. Let me see. So, all right, I'll get rid of that. So, uh, we're going to look at render layers because I've done a tutorial on it before at a very basic level, but they've moved it. So, I'm just going to repeat it here for those of you who are not familiar with it. So I'll show you how I use it in a couple of ways. One is that sometimes I'll put only the model that I'm built working on inside one layer. So let's, let's take a look at this layer like this. And the only thing I have in here are these models. Well, I have the plane. I don't, sometimes I don't even put the plane in this layer. Oh, in fact, let's do that. Let's click this plane and I'll press M and then I'm going to press 2. I'm going to put it over in layer 2 in there. So then the only thing that's in here are these trucks and the back of these trucks. And the reason I do that is kind of like a way of grouping your objects. So sometimes I'll only have this truck, but and then I can press A and have and select it. But this is good enough, so I have it in the scene, and then I can press B, and then I just have that object selected. And I do that so I can make a copy as I go. I'll copy it off to the side or or up above. All right. So let's go put the lights back on in here, and then we'll go over to the scene. Now I have all the objects in the scene that I want to use in here when I'm working. So the selecting the objects is one reason I put it in individual layers and also sometimes I'll have just like if I, I want to use if I want to work on part of the truck sometimes these things are in the way like this ex these exhaust stacks are in the way so I could just turn those off and the door actually that's one of the reasons that the door was in that layer was because the door I'll turn it off the door was preventing me from working somewhere on the inside a little while ago and so I can just get rid of that like that but if I put everything on, the only thing that's part of this truck in the scene are the lights and the plane and what you see in here. So as long as those are in there, and if, if I use a default selection, if I come over here and you see where the render button is, well, layer, render layers used to be within this button, but now they have a own button of their own right in here. So it's right here. And I have all these, I only have these three turned on, but if you look at yours, yours is going to look like this. You're just going to have all these guys turned on. All of these here are going to be depressed. Whoops. When you first come in. And basically what it's saying is when you press F12 to render it, where you hit the render button under the in within the render tab, then it's going to it's going to look at all of these layers and it's going to see what happens to be active. And in my case, there's only 3 active layers in the scene, so it can it's going to it's going to look at layer 1, 2, and 11, but it's also going to look at all these other layers and do a rendering of those like that. So, well, the only thing you're going to see, though, because the way my camera's focused, you only see all of these like this. So let's back that camera out real quick. Whoops. Let's lock the camera to the view, go to the camera, and back it out. All right, so now I have other things in the scene here. Right. Notice those are well we'll do this. All right, that's good. There. And then it might not be enough light next to one of those. Let's go do this. Let's just shift D put a light over there. It does that like it's gonna not operate. Sometimes if you have a lot of lights in the scene, it'll just do that. So now I have a light over there in the scene. You can see it's starting to illuminate part of that truck over there. Alright. Okay, so now with everything selected like this, if I press F12, it's rendering everything in the scene, right? So, but I don't want it to render everything in the scene by default. So maybe you have things stuffed up here on, and what I have is I'll typically have these guys set as, you notice they have stuff over here in all these layers, and I use these as backup layers sometimes, or sometimes as cycle layers. Well, if you're, you know, <laughs> I don't want all that. So what I can do is I can just pick if I'm only using 1, 2, and 3, so I just press 1, then shift that, shift select that. Now when I render it at F12, it only renders what's on these three layers, all right? And the beauty of that is maybe I don't want to render it with the, uh, with the exhaust stack. So then even though the exhaust stack is part of the scene, just by turning the render layer off like that, then it's only going to render the truck with lights, Oh, but it's not going to render the plane because the plane is in this level too. So let's say F12. So then it just does the truck all by itself. 
or if I only want to do the exhaust stack by itself, F12, then it renders the exhaust stack. Oh, that must be in layer two also. It sure enough it is. If I go press, let's go look at F. Let's go look at that layer. Uh, no, it must be in this layer down here. Oh, somehow I have it down in this layer here. So in that case, you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to move it up to layer one. All right. But you can see just by so in this case, it's only going to render what's in layer 11 and layer two. And in that case, that's going to be this. Or if I don't want to, if I don't want to see the lights, I could just turn the lights off. Right? It's still going to do something. F12, and there it is. Well, that's a rendered image, but there's no lights, and so you don't really see much. So it gives you a lot of flexibility. And sometimes, if you have really huge models with lots of polygons, and if you're doing glass within cycles, then it's just a lot more efficient to do it a render layer at a time how you want to do it. All right, I hope that gives you a little insight. There's layers are much, much more sophisticated. Render layers are much more sophisticated than that. Typically used in conjunction with nodes and in conjunction with all the direct lighting and the indirect lighting and a whole variety of things. So you can see what rendering is taking place with, within each of those areas and then you can adjust it accordingly. But that's not my area of specialty. That's really better for those who are um, focus on really super nice high-end quality renderings which is not my focus I tend to focus on real-time animation within the game engines for math and physics and things like that so it's a whole different game altogether I know enough about it to to get around it of course but but um, but for me this is really all I need to really make things work okay well that's it for now and I'll see you in the next lesson